Hi, I just wanted to go through today getting these old HP Compaq recovery images working in a virtual machine. Um, obviously, they put a lot of protection in place to make sure that this can't happen, but with a bit of trial and error, you can get through it. These are the instructions here. So if you're technically minded enough, you can probably screenshot these instructions and go through it yourself. Um, you'll need virtualization software such as VirtualBox or VMware work Workstation. With VirtualBox, the only option I had to change from default was to go into settings and tick the enable IR APIC box. In VMware Workstation, I just made a Windows XP virtual machine and all worked fine by default. You'll obviously need the recovery disks. I'm using these ones here. You'll need um, ISO authoring software that can add and remove boot information from an ISO. These are the only three pieces of software I know that can do this. Um, if you are aware of any free software that can do this, um, please let me know. That would be amazing. But right now, um, I use Pi Power ISO myself. You can get a 30 day free trial and run it in a virtual machine and probably just keep resetting the trial. Um, but obviously, you need this functionality here for what we're doing. Uh, you'll need Hiron's Boot CD or another live CD software. Um, Hiron's Boot CD is 15.2. You will need specifically if you get the blue screen message here. I did not get this blue screen error message when setting this up, but it seems like other people online do when trying to run through this process. And if you do get that, you will need to run this CMD file in the Hiron's Boot CD. So I'm going to use that today. It's also period correct, but any live CD software that can delete is fine. And you'll need a original Windows XP ISO. Um, in this example, I'll be using the just the Volume License Service Pack 3 ISO. This one here with the VL in it. Um, I'm sure any ISO, any Windows XP ISO with the right boot information will do it. So that's all that out of the way. Cool. So the first thing we'll need to do is we will need to download the HP slash compact recovery disk set and we will need to open the first disk, disk one, with one of those disk authoring softwares. Um, I've got Power ISO up here. Um, Ultra ISO can also do it and other disk authoring software can do it as well. Um, in an Ultra ISO, it's there, for example. Um, let's open that up. Now, what we'll actually need to do first before we do that is just create a copy. Because we will still need, as you'll find out soon, you'll still need this original disk one ISO. So let's just make this one mod. Cool. So we'll open that one up. And we'll also open up our Windows XP Service Pack 3. What we'll need to do with this is we will need to click Save Boot Information on the Windows XP one. So we need to save this original boot information. So we go Save Boot Information. Save it in here. As you can see, I've already run through this process once, but we'll just override it. Cool. So now I've got this BIF file that is generated. So what we can do with that file is we can delete the HP boot information file that blocks booting from this ISO if the wrong motherboard is used. And we can just pull the default Windows one and chuck it on there and save that one out. Make sure you do not overwrite this file because we will still need it. Cool. Uh, the reason we still need this file is because for some reason when you change the boot information file it somehow corrupts the ISO. Um, there's enough still there to boot from it but something weird happens. I'm not sure what. As you can see the size difference is huge. But that's okay. So we do that and now we can get our virtual machine created. So let's get started with that. Just got custom selected. We'll use Windows XP Professional for this one. Give it a name that is memorable. One CPU is fine, some more RAM wouldn't hurt. Whether or not you give it networking is up to you, I haven't had any trouble with that. I always use bus logic. I'm not sure about these other options and whether or not they work. We're just gonna do IDE, create virtual disk as a single file with 40 gigs. Whether or not you do that, I don't think matters either. Yeah, cool. So we've got our virtual machine created, completely empty. Now what we need to do is we will need to select that modified disk one file to boot from. So let's get that one. And we'll go through. You'll see instead of it erroring out here, because we pulled the XP boot information, it boots straight in.
Awesome. Welcome to PC Recovery. Now, at this point, before we click OK, as soon as it's finished reading from the CD, what we need to do is we actually need to swap the ISO file that we just booted from with the original ISO file, because if you click continue here, it will wear out and shut down. Don't know what the difference is and why this happens, but that's OK. We just select the original disk one, click OK. Give it a few seconds to make sure that disk is loaded and ready to go. OK. Awesome. And so now the grueling process of inserting 10 virtual disk images into the drive. Awesome, and the process is complete, but we're not done yet. So make sure you turn off here. If you boot directly into the Windows XP install, it won't work. So let's go turn off. Thankfully, they put a turn off option here. Very handy. So now what we're going to need to actually do is we're going to need to boot into Hiren's boot CD. So we'll put the Hiren's boot CD into the drive. Make sure it's connected to power on. Um, pretty sure it's VMware, VMware Workstation. It doesn't set the CD as the first, first boot device, so just make sure we do that. Otherwise, it'll boot from the hard drive. Which won't be very helpful at all. Cool. So we can select our mini Windows XP. Any recovery, um, live CD, whatever, will work for this. So once we're in here, do it the easy way and work in the file explorer. Navigate to our C drive, HP, bin, and we open the config check directory and delete all of the files inside. Now we can shut down the virtual machine. Awesome. Uh, at this point, you might want to snapshot it. We'll just remove the irons first. And we'll snapshot the virtual machine. Make sure that's not checked either. And now at this point, you should be good to go. As long as you create a snapshot, you can go back if you've run into any issues. Awesome. So we'll just jump through as quickly as possible. Just disconnected the internet there because it skips the whole trying to see if there's internet part of the process. Now HP will install all of their junk. Uh, keep in mind, um, Windows XP Home Edition does have activation required, and because this isn't the original motherboard, it's going to reset that, and you have 30 days to activate or you'll get locked out. The easiest way to bypass this is run an upgrade install with a Windows XP Service Pack 3 volume license ISO file, such as the one located here. Make sure it is volume license and that will just, it just doesn't have activation at all. So 
and usually the upgrade install is pretty good about keeping all of the manufacturer customizations. Um, the other thing you can do is use an activator. There's heaps of Windows XP, WPA removers around, but that's the easiest way I've found. Um, I haven't actually tried it with this specific compact ISO, but I've seen people do it around the place. Cool, and now we're in. Just keep in mind as well, um, if you run this process on a non-clean hard drive, and we'll just go... We'll just go boot back in from the beginning. Um, if you run it from a non-clean hard drive, what it will do is it will ask more questions. In this case, you just go advanced and you go destructive PC recovery. So th this will come up if it's not a non-clean hard drive. We just go advanced, options, destructive recovery, next, and we click yes, and it will do a destructive recovery. Exactly the same recovery as we did before. So thank you.